Hey guys, this is Leo, community manager for Parabellum War Games. And this is Kostadinos, the lead writer of Parabellum War Games. And today we're going to be talking about five things that make Conquest unique. I'm just here for the last one. Thing number one. Empty table. <laughs> when you start a game of Conquest, there is nothing on the table. Apart from hopefully the actual table and, and some terrain, but there are no force pre deployed before battle. You have three different classifications of regiments that is light, medium, and heavy. And usually this has to do to a certain extent with how strong they are, but mostly it has to do with when and how early they come into the play. Into play. For example, militia and militia bullmen, they would come from as early as turn one or two, whereas heavier regiments, let's say like Abomination or Dragon Slayers, they would come from turn four or five and onwards, right? So it's this balance between different regiments and how they play that make a difference, uh, that make a difference in your army list. Wow, that is super interesting, Leo. What is thing number two? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think this is a good segue for unique thing number two, the reinforcement system. <laughs> When a regiment comes onto the table, you have to check two things. And one, the most important thing is where your reinforcement line is, as opposed to where your, the enemy regiments are. Very quick example. Let's say you have a regiment of household guards. Let's say that I have a regiment of household guards. I was and, you say. Ha and you have a regiment of house squirrels. The first thing that I wanna, I wanna check at the very beginning of the turn, right? is I want to see where my foremost regiment is. And my foremost regiment is the regiment that is the closest to your table edge. In this case, the uh, household guard. Now I take the rearmost point and I draw a line parallel to the table. I'm going to use dice for this example, right? And I'm going to set a line, right? That I can use to bring my, my regiments from the side of the table up to this point. I can always bring my regiments from my own side of the table but I can always bring the regiments all the way up to, you know, the, um, to the sides, up to that point. If we were engaged with my Huskarls, would now, that still be the case? Yes, now that wouldn't make any difference. However, what's very important is that as I'm playing, as, I'm, as we're playing the game, if I move my foremost regiment up, my reinforcement line never changes. However, if you, for example, cross my reinforcement line, then I would have to disregard that and draw and consider the next one as the as the foremost one. Excellent. I know all there is to know about reinforcements. Talk to me about the third thing. Command stack. <laughs> so, every regiment in Conquest has a, has a corresponding command card. For this example, we're going to take a regiment of men at arms, mercenary crossmen, and household knights. Now. What I want to do at the very beginning of the turn is that I want to determine the order of activations for my regiments. So, I will take my command cards and arrange them into a command stack. Command stack is a face-down deck, which order I do not reveal to my opponent. So let's say that I'd like to activate the mercenary crossman first, then the household knights, and then the men-at-arms. What I would do is I would put my mercenary crossman at the very top of the deck, then the household knights, and then the men at arms in such a way that when I draw them again, the order in which I will be revealing my command cards and therefore the order in which I will be activating them go as planned at the very beginning of the turn. And as a second player, your opponent, I would do the same. And it's good to remind people that we have an alternate activation system. So once Leo activates his first command card, you play one of your I play one of mine, activating my abomination. And then I would activate my household knights and that would mean I activate my brute drones. And I would activate my minotaurs. Until the round is finished with my force grown drones and their two action. Now, once the round is done and once we've activated all of our command cards, we pick them all up again, of course, uh, including the ones that are, will be the regiments that will be coming from reserves that turn, and include them in a command stack and make it well, again a new. Fourth unique thing about conquest retinues and list building. Conquest has a very specific way in which we in which we create our army lists. One of the most important things is that every army list is essentially smaller warbands that come together and act as an army. Every warband has a has a, a leader, a character 
that unlocks mainstay and restricted units. Mainstay regiments are the regiments that are thematically available to that character, let's say mercenary crossman or to a imperial officer. Uh, or for example, uh, restricted are things that are either not as easily available to that character or rare in general, right? So every regiment can have up to four, red, up to four every warband can have up to four regiments and they have, you need to have at least one regiment that the character can join. The other thing is that what's very important is that there is a lot of customization to the actual character. So every character in this specific case in Noble Lord, that's an infantry character, occupies their own stand right now when i'm building up when i'm building the my character the first option that i have to make is whether i want to make the character my warlord every character has their own abilities that make that unique to them when they become the leader of the whole army then i get to choose between items that are then split into weapons armor uh, standards and so on then I can choose masteries. These are things that are very unique to that character, things that I picked up along their life or they tie in with the theme that you've built for that character. Then of course, if it's let's say an Imperial officer, you can have battlefield drills and, and buy these different orders and all these different abilities that they can pass on to a different regiment. Or in the case, let's say of a noble lord, you can go for masteries for, sorry, weapon arts and the like. And last and most important is the retinues. So retinues are miniatures that you add to a character stand, in this case up to three in order to fill the stand, right? And its tier provides a certain upgrade and a certain set of bonuses for the character. For example, let's say that I'm attaching my character to a regiment of Household Guard. Now one of the really nice combos you can have is having a regalia of the Empire as a standard. However, a character cannot take a standard unless they have at least a tier one upgrade from the tactical tier tree. In this case, we pay five points and we add a drill master just to show and signify that this character has unlocked the tier one from the tactical mastery. And this way you can, you can employ and you can use all these different uh, standards that you'd like to use. This of course gives you a lot of customization for the, for the miniatures and for all the conversions you can do. And last, but in no way least, it's how the rules and the lore interact. One of the very important aspects of Conquest is Wait, that... Wait, we didn't go... <laughs> so one of the most important aspects of Conquest is how everything that you're fielding onto the table plays exactly as you have read it in the lore, in the short stories, and as you've seen it maybe in, in the living world, in the stories contained there. It's very important that you're able to create your own story and really allow it to show on the tabletop, whether that is with a host of different options for your regiments, for your characters, all these different builds and all these different ways in which you can create your army. And that is something that we looked into from the very beginning. The very way that you do list building in Conquest is tied in with the lore because each character is attached to a specific sub-faction and the retinues, mainstay and restricted, that they can draw are attached to, those, to that sub-faction as well. Some, of course, uh, usually the mainstays, may be a little broader, like the men-at-arms, they can apply to several sub-factions, but the core idea, and that is evident from the mainstay and restricted choices of its character to the retinues, and the access to different tiers of retinues that each character has, those are attached to the lore that comes behind themselves as characters and the sub-faction that they represent. That's it folks, five things that make Conquest unique. Thank you for joining us for this video. We have a lot more videos, check the links below. All of our rules are for free online. Check out the Nepenthe series, the Arden, great lore, and we'll see you again in our next videos.